everybody. How you doing today? Um, not doing that great. My back's killing me, so I didn't get up on the roof. I was going to show everybody my solar panels, but I'm not climbing the ladder today. I'm lazy today. But I'm making this, uh, we're getting ready to put this relay in. And also someone asked me about uh, the difference between a home-built charge controller and a store-bought one. So my other friend said I should make a video anyway. So this is a store-bought one. Now, it didn't come with that digital meter. I got two of those for five bucks, actually. They're motorcycle meters on eBay, just regular old voltage meters. And as you can see, I'm in a, well, discharge mode now, basically, they call it. And uh, it's not even really sunny today. It's off and on. I'm not running that much off that side. That's my one. And that's the store-bought one. And what that does is basically now all the solar is doing nothing. And on this one, the one I made, it's a diversion one. And uh, it'll uh, divert that power. All I got to do is hit a button to do it. I ain't going to do it right now because I got it in uh, the extended diversion mode where it kicks over for five minutes or until the batteries become 15% depleted. So it doesn't just sit there and switch back and forth like I showed you before, which is better. So anyway, uh, I'm going to add this relay in too. But let me do the difference between the charge controllers here. Now this is a store-bought charge controller, and this is one big difference. Most of them are plastic, and can you see that? It melted bad. Now that was partly my fault and theirs because uh, I was running too many watts. But they say they can handle so many amps, so you figure if you run the amps and they don't really tell you the watts, well, I'll, I'll tell you. Most of these little things, that's all they are. They run about, it says 30 amps, but they only run about maybe 360 watts. And I got 600, so that that's what happened to it. It ended up melting the case. And, uh, and another thing I don't like about these, these back here on the back, these are the heat sinks. And what the heat sink actually is, is this plate. Now look, it got so hot it melted that sticker back there. But it's this metal plate. Well, it bolts right up against your wall. So to me, that's not a good thing. As a matter of fact, when I put it on, I use spacers. And I would advise you to do the same if you're putting it up against anything that's flammable. Now, this one, I bought this box, and I made it myself because I wanted it in a metal box, just in case. And uh, let's open it up here, and I'll show you what's in it and the difference. Now, you can build them any way you want, but uh, actually, I could have got a bigger box. Throw it on the ground. Okay. That's the inside of this one. Now, uh, I haven't got very good light, but i got a very good light here, so let me grab it. Hold on one second. Okay. Now, see if I can get decent light on it there without blinding everybody. But that's the inside of that one, and there's a, I don't know if you can see it right there, that black thing in the middle is a, a built, not a built-in heat sink, it's an add-on one. Now, I don't have those wires normally running over it, but since I took the case off, that's what the wires are hanging on, holding that front case up. Now, if you heard that click, it just kicked into diversion mode through that relay. And what I really like about this is the power comes in, you can't, it's hard to see, but over there, it comes in and then it goes up to the relay here. And when the relay kicks in, it sends that power through that white one over here to that little loop. And then that red wire going down is the wire going to my battery. But once it disconnects, it totally disconnects from this uh, circuit board here and everything. It all goes through the relay. And so that's the reason for adding another relay. Even though I'm at 30 amps right now, I got the other relay, and I want to use it to put it in just so I, I made room for two of them. I cut the hole for it. So now I can make it. Just put this relay in right here, right next to it, and uh, and there we go. It'll be uh, just run them in parallel where the solar is coming into both of them. And the, and the thing I noticed, the trick thing I noticed, too, that tab that's off, that's the uh, diversion load. 
So if I really wanted to, I could run that to another set of battery banks besides the first diversion load I got here or another 12-volt accessory or whatever I want. So that's pretty cool. So that's on that one. Not every one you get will be like that, but this is the best one I could find. It's American-made down in Texas. It's got that heat sink. You can add more on if you want to down the road, and uh, I like it. And this relay, just the way it works, my friend said to explain it because I was figuring it out myself. I got a diagram here I could show you too. But basically what it is is you got uh, – two wires here to control it, this yellow and blue wire, that's what activates it, and then it's just a little solenoid inside. So when the solenoid's just closed like that, normally closed, it's charging my battery. Well, when it gets to a certain point, it kicks that little bar over, and that little bar goes to whatever load I want. You know, it just goes elsewhere, so it just sends the power directly elsewhere, and by running two of them, it'll go through two of them. Every time I add one on, these things hold 30 amps. So that's another 30 amps. So uh, it's pretty cool. Now it says if you get over 60 amps, if you're actually pushing 60 through, which I'm not, but if you get there, maybe uh, add on bigger heat sink, and it's actually got a, some bars there to even add on more heat sinks. So really, this is the way to go. These little cheap charge controllers, uh, you know, this one cost me like 25 bucks, but I mean, even for 100 bucks, that's basically what you're getting, a cheap piece of plastic, and you might get a meter in it if you spend 100 or over. Now, this one's okay if you want to do what I did and just get one and put the meter in. I had that one left over. It started failing me on my fridge side, so I took it off, and now it started working after that. I don't know what the deal was, so I'm using it on my second uh, battery bank. So anyway... I made this video long. I hope it was informative. And, uh, yeah, here's the wiring diagram, how I got it set up. My solar, it shows when. But it just comes right in here and then goes out to the solenoid. And then from the solenoid, it directs it either back to my battery through the circuit board or to whatever source I want. So, anyway, hope everybody liked it. I'll be making another one. And uh, anytime. Thanks, guys. Bye.